Hi everybody, welcome back once again to the Eastfield Gun Room YouTube channel. You will notice that today we haven't got a gun on the table, so we're not going to be doing a normal review. Instead, we are going to bring you another part of our essential guide series, and today we are going to be looking at chokes. So before we kick off with today's video, which is all about chokes, I want to say a big thank you to everyone that's already liked and subscribed to the channel. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, then do click that like button, do click that subscribe button, because all of that helps to keep the channel going. So where do we start with chokes? What is the definition of a choke? The definition of a choke is simply the tapered constriction on the muzzle end of a shotgun. And that basically means it's all about what kind of pattern, what kind of spread the end of the barrel chucks out. It's as simple as that. So why do we need chokes? That's the next thing I want to talk about. Now, we need chokes because in terms of shotgun shooting, whether it's clay, game, wild fouling, whatever, each application requires a different kind of cartridge, a different kind of gun, and essentially it requires a different choke. So to give you uh, the most basic example I can, you're going to go and shoot skeet, which is a 22-yard target, which is high house, low house, etc. It's quite a close target. It's not particularly tricky in terms of the presentation of the clay. You would use an open choke, and that's what a skeet choke is invented for, skeet choke for skeet shooting. It's a little bit the same with trap shooting. So if you want to, if you had a trap gun, it would typically be choked very tightly, which is full and three quarters, because the presentation of the clay is completely different. The angle is different. And what that requires is it requires a tighter shot string over a slightly longer range. So a little bit of history, up until the late 1970s, early 1980s, when we had the eventuality, the, the introduction, if you like, of the multi-choke, all shotguns prize that would have been fixed choke. What that basically meant is whatever the barrel was bored at at the point of manufacture is what the choke was. It was you couldn't change the choke, it was just fixed. And that's when we talk about kind of trap guns being fixed choke for three quarter full, etc. skeet guns for skeet. But when more chokes were first introduced, that then gave the shooter a, a massive option because what they could do is you've got a barrel that was essentially internally threaded. And what you could do is you could have a series of little chokes like we've got here that screwed in and out of the barrel depending on the shooting application of the shotgun. So what a choke is, it's essentially the constriction on the lead that's coming out the end of the barrel. So if you've got a very, very tight choke, it will give you more range. If you've got an open choke, it will give you a larger pattern at a shorter distance. Let's assume you've got your multi-choke, because that's the thing we're focusing on. Most guns today, particularly with a steel shot, are multi-choke. Most people want multi-choke because they want a gun they can take game shooting, they can take it clay shooting, they can take it pigeon shooting, and that is the versatility that multi-choke shotguns offer. So, you're at home, you've got your shiny new Bratta Silver Pigeon, you've opened the box, took all the bubble wrap out, and you're presented with five different choke tubes, not dissimilar to what we've got in front of us. Now, what you will have in those five different choke tubes, you will have the entire range of what you are probably going to need for various applications. So, you'll start off with what's essentially a barn door. It's a true cylinder or a skeet choke, which is very, very open. Then you'll move up to improved cylinder, which is quarter choke. Then from there, you go to modify, which is half choke, three quarters, which improve modified, and then full, which is essentially almost like a bullet because it has such a tight shot string. So it's all well and good saying this is full, this is quarter, this is half. But what does that actually mean? Good question. In terms of constrictions, chokes are measured in thousandths of an inch. And it, with chokes, it is so simple to understand because if you look at those, the five principal chokes we've talked about, so we've got cylinder quarter half three quarter full or for the american version it's cylinder improved cylinder modified improved modified and full each constriction gets tighter by ten thousandth of an inch so skeet choke barn door open and we'll talk about this more in a minute we'll talk about actual patterns and what things produce um it's basically true cylinder there's no choke in it whatsoever a ten thousand constriction on top of that will give you quarter choke a twenty thousand constriction is half choke a 30 thou constriction is, you've guessed it, three quarter choke. And of course, 40 thou is four, which is a very, very tight shot string. If you're bamboozled by that, then just rewind a little bit and obviously watch it again. It takes a little bit of getting used to, particularly because of the fact we have to talk about obviously the US choke denominations and also the UK, Europe, etc. You might not think that that little 10 thou increments will make that much of a difference, but you will be absolutely amazed. So, what is each of these little chokes in this plastic box of your, your shiny new gun actually going to do in terms of hitting a clay or bringing a pigeon down? So in this little 28 gram standard clay busting cartridge, we have got 400 approximately, don't quote me on that, tiny little bits of lead. 
Now, I know obviously we're moving forward to steel. It is coming. I've mentioned it in many videos before. We will talk about that later on in the video, but for now, we're going to concentrate on what is in here. So, we talked about the five basic chokes. Stay with me, people. Cylinder, quarter, half, three quarter, full. Now, if you put one or two of these, whatever, into your over and under side by side semi auto shotgun, what does that actually give you in terms of the spread when coupled up with those chokes? So over here, I've got a handy little graphic, which is going to appear on screen now through the magic of television. And that's just going to offer you a visual aid to understand what I'm trying to explain in terms of constrictions and pattern when we're talking about each individual choke. So in order to simplify things and to help with the explanation, what I've done is I've chosen a standard generic shooting distance of 30 yards. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the constriction of each choke and how it performs at that distance. So let's get into it. As you can see on the screen, we have got six different constrictions of chokes. We've talked about the fact there's 400 pellets in this little bad boy. So we kick off cylinder choke, which is pretty much wide open. We know that we talked about that at 30 yards. We have gone from 400 pellets down to 240. You can see it says there skeet, which is a tiny bit tighter. Again, it says on the screen. You're going up to 288 pellets, so it's, it's tightened up a tiny, tiny little bit. Then we move into quarter or improved cylinder, and then we've got 308 pellets in our pattern at 30 yards. Moving on, I sound like a game show host. If we go to modified, which is half, and then we see we've got 332 of our original 400 pellets. So you can see it's quite tight now, not a lot of margin for error, and I think that's why a lot of people favor half choke because it kills extremely, extremely well regardless of the application, game, clay, whatever. Going up then to three quarter chokes, so we're tightening up a little bit more again, and we've got 364 pellets. So only the odd flyer really outside the pattern. It's very tight, very concentrated. And then as you'd expect, right up to full, and we've got the whole complement of everything that came out of that cartridge. 400 pellets at 30 yards in our pattern. So I hope that gives you a good indication of what we're talking about and what each of those little chokes in your Silver Pigeon 525, whatever, is doing at 30 yards. Now, to go a little bit more in depth, if we go out to 40 yards, then what happens to the pattern? So as the pattern goes further out, the pattern breaks up, you get a 20 to 25% reduction in the pattern. So for argument's sake, we have a quick look back at the chart. We had 288 pellets at 30 yards with skeet choke we have now got just 200. So it's a big, big difference. Now we know what the chokes do, what they're capable of, what they're producing with a 28 gram, seven and a half cartridge. What choke is right for you? Now, this is a question I get asked so, so many times. Now I get people here that are new shooters and you know, as you can quite understand, they've been fooled into thinking that using open chokes means they're gonna hit everything. That is not the case. We know now from that graphic and what we've discussed that a clay at 30 yards can go straight through the middle of a skeet choke. If you wanna be able to hit that clay consistently, you need a side to shot string at a longer range. What that basically means, if you, for argument's sake, take, if we go back into the 1970s and 80s and we look at what fixed choke guns were fixed at, that gives you an indication of what has always been the norm, what's always been popular, what's been acceptable for different types of shooting. For example, if you buy a Beretta, Winchester, Browning, whatever game gun from the last 40 years and they're fixed choke, inevitably they will be choked quarter and half or quarter and three quarter. Now the idea behind that is you always want a slightly tighter choke in your upper barrel rather than your lower barrel because certainly in game shooting applications, if you miss it with the first shot, by the time you pull the trigger the second time, inevitably the little feathered friend has disappeared a bit further. So based on that, if you're starting out my recommendation is avoid the very, very open chokes because they are they are specific chokes for very short range. Like I said, skeet shooting in particular, although I would say if you want to go pigeon shooting at close range, skeet chokes can be quite handy. My advice to, like I said, most people taking up the sport is to shoot quarter quarter. Now that goes away from what I've just said about having different chokes in different barrels, but a quarter choke will give you a lot cleaner kills than something like a skeet or a cylinder and ultimately will build your confidence. And also by having the same choke in each barrel, it stops you analyzing things. You know, there's a lot to take on when you take up the sport in terms of what carts you should use, what choke should you use, what glasses do or buy. Let's take out one of those variables. Let's shoot the same choke in each barrel and let's get the confidence up. Let's get you breaking a few clays. Moving on to game shooting now. It's a little bit different these days, you know, historically 
50, 60 years ago, game shooting for people involved a lot of walked up shooting, whereby they were people were working the hedgerows with dogs, pop shots at pigeons, rabbits, hares, that kind of stuff. It's a little bit different today. Nowadays, we talk about extreme pheasant shooting, tall birds in places like Devon, Cornwall, things like that. We've other places in Wales. And for that, you need tight chokes and long barrels because the birds can be absolutely atmospheric. For general game shooting, I would go back to the quarter and half rule because you will kill most things with half. Even at ranges of maybe up to 50 yards, you've still got a good amount of shot there. You should still kill it nice and cleanly. Again, in terms of a confidence thing, if you're moving up from clay shooting to game shooting, it's always good to get a tighter choke, get that tighter shot string. My advice there though would always be don't really go on a driven game shoot until you're confident you can kill the bird cleanly. And of course, that's where choke will have an impact. So that moves us on to the really, really tight chokes. Now, the application for tight chokes in clay shooting certainly, and I'm talking about three quarters full, etc., would always be down the line and trap shooting disciplines, Olympic trap, universal trench, that kind of stuff, because of the presentation of the clay and also of the speed of the clay. If you go back to sport and you speak to a lot of top sporting shots, they very rarely use anything tighter than three quarters just to bamboozle you even further. Obviously, there's different, there's actually the middle chokes. You can get chokes between quarter and a half, which is three eighths. You can get a five eighths, you can get a seven eighths. And this is all part of learning about chokes because, for example, I deal with a lot of people who are, I would call, social shooters, but they want to shoot at a reasonably high level. And a lot of those people, a lot of these customers will favor the 3 8 choke because it gives you that little bit more shot string than a quarter choke for like an edge on target or something. And again, it's like a, it's a slack half tight quarter and it's that nice middle ground and it just, it's a really, really effective choke for sporting clay shooting. Finally, we move on to the really tight stuff. We talked about full, you might look at extra full. In all fairness, this is not something the majority of people that go shooting tend to use very often. It is in extreme circumstances for game shooting. You might want to shoot a fox or something like that where you're obviously not shooting for the table. We talked about tall pheasants, that kind of stuff. There are specific dedicated high pheasant guns available on the market today, which are choked, three quarter and full. So that kind of wraps up the, the constriction and what choke is right for you. If you've got any questions about chokes, obviously feel free to contact me directly and I will help you the best I can. Obviously, we touch in a lot of videos about the whole steel shot thing. Now, steel performs completely differently as a material than lead. My advice to you is if you've got a mortar choke gun and you end up having to shoot steel, I would always go down a choke side. And what I mean by that is whereas you'd normally shoot a half choke, quarter choke in most circumstances with steel, is absolutely fine and it'll perform just the same as half choke. And to be fair, that's not just my opinion. A lot of people in the industry kind of swear by that with steel shot too. Now, as if this video hasn't been bamboozling enough, obviously there's different chokes available on the market. You can get extended ones, flush ones, ported ones, different colored ones. There's, they're made out of different materials. I've got an example here. We've got titanium ones, aircraft aluminium ones. My advice to you is it's a very personal thing. If you are happy with a particular choke and it gives you confidence, whether you're shooting game or clays, I would absolutely stick with that. Everyone's gonna have a different opinion. It's exactly the same as cartridges, it's no different. All as I would say is don't be afraid to experiment, particularly with some of the uh, the mid chokes like 3.8s, 5.8s, etc. We're all looking for those extra few clays. We're all looking for those extra birds. And like I said, from a confidence point of view, if you drop on something that you're happy with, just stick with it and go from there. One final point I want to talk about, obviously this is mainly aimed at new shooters. Chokes can be quite fragile. They do need looking after. My advice would be, we've not done a cleaning video yet, but we will do. Take the chokes out after every time you've shot the gun, make sure they're clean, make sure the threads in the barrels are the clean. And also my advice would be to use a very, very fine grease rather than oil in terms of lubrication. If you do have any feelings that you've got a slightly damaged choke or you've took a choke out and it's particularly rusted or pitted, my advice would be just chuck it straight in the bin. The last thing you want is three and a half tons of pressure going up those smoothbore barrels and there being an issue with the choke because the uh, consequences could be quite severe. So that pretty much wraps up the essential guide to chokes by me, Matthew Morgan of the Eastfield Gun Room. Like I said, it's a very personal thing. Chokes are very subjective. What might work for somebody isn't going to work for somebody else. Don't be afraid to get out there and experiment. Try some different brands. Try some different constrictions. 
and ultimately you will benefit from those decisions. If you've got any questions about Chokes, do feel free to contact me directly. If I've missed anything out, put it in the comments, send me an email, tell me off, I need to know about it, okay? Don't forget to check out the website and if you haven't already hit the like button, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. From me, Matthew Morgan, the Eastfield Gun Room, the essential guide to chokes. I'll see you soon.